For the majority of working families on Guam, quality childcare is a critical need. To help meet this need, there are over 50 licensed childcare centers and over 50 family childcare homes registered with the Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Public Welfare. With a wide range of centers and family homes to choose from, parents look for a setting that best meets their family's needs. The focus of this video is on inclusive childcare services and settings. An inclusive childcare setting welcomes all children, regardless of their abilities or disabilities. Although there are no specific federal or local laws mandating inclusive childcare settings, there are laws and regulations that protect the rights of young children with disabilities in accessing services. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 1997, also known as IDEA, states that young children with disabilities have a right to services in their natural environment to best meet their educational needs. For infants and toddlers, the natural environment is in their home or childcare setting. The Americans with Disabilities Act prohibits discrimination against people on the basis of a disability in public services. This includes childcare centers, family childcare homes, and Head Start programs. Furthermore, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 prohibits discrimination against children on the basis of disability by any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. This applies to child care centers, family child care homes, public or private preschools, and Head Start programs. Barbara Kitichu was one parent who decided to place her son in an inclusive family home center. Daniel, a four-year-old with Down syndrome, has been attending Lee's Play School daily for the last four months on a half-day basis. Through friends, I heard Lee had a, a preschool going on, or a home care, and I uh, decided that I should come and observe how she, you know, handles her children. I just wanted to make sure that whoever was going to handle Daniel uh, during the time that I was working is able to, to uh, make him feel like he is one of them. I have noticed Daniel, he is very motivated in himself and is very confident in carrying himself out, say like to the playground. Maybe because the other kids are around him that encourages him to, to try. Daniel really works well when he's with his peers. He sees them do things or uh, sit down and color or, you know, and just, he's very attentive. He, when he sees Lisa speaking to the other kids, then he learns from all that. He challenges himself, you know. He, he wants to be like Cisco. He wants to be like uh, um, Alondra, that she can, she's able to uh, speak. And uh, surprisingly, Daniel has, his speaking is more clear and uh, more with words. Lisa Mesa, the director of Lee's Play School, relates that she didn't have to take any special measures to prepare for Daniel's inclusion at her family child care home. I didn't do much preparing. Actually, my house is a home setting. To me, he's their size, he's their age, so my tables were adequate size for him. As far as providing a ramp, if he wasn't able to walk, I have a uh, portable ramp. The bathrooms, doors are open all the time, so there is no real adjustments that I did have to make. He goes on our little trampoline like everybody else. He stays in the line and actually we treat him as every other kid here. I did not have to go out of my way to make any changes. When Daniel came here, I had already taken some workshops and courses on uh, children with disability who are now referred to as typical or a typical child. I took a couple of courses in again, Heiser workshops and I've continued on with Cedars and so I was aware of these changes that needed to be made and how you can include children so having him here and having him not have a physical disability it was really easy for me we sat down and his attention span was as wide or is as wide as all my children I have all of them sitting down doing story time from zero to five so I know what their attention span should be. And so I have him either sitting in my lap or sitting with the other kids. Leona Mothness, a teacher at the Honey Bear Child Care Center, shares her experiences in working in an inclusive setting. Kaitao is one of our after school students. He arrives here by bus between 2 to 2.30. He's a kindergarten, he's five years old, and he attends Tumani Elementary. Uh, when Kaitao first came to us, 
It was a matter of introducing himself to the children and his disability, which he is a hearing, hearing impaired. It wasn't much of a big issue with the children. They would ask questions like, why doesn't he hear? But you know, it, as our part, we explained that as a child, you know, he lost, he, he lost his hearing, but he basically is the same as, you know, any of the other kids. The kids didn't really see much of a problem with it. What we did was we had the kids, um, we did a little sign language with the children. So, you know, we signed, we taught them to sign hello or please sorry, thank you. And we also have like transition songs that we taught the children in sign. Sign language is something that we had already implemented in our daycare. It was just a matter of get them getting the idea of why we sign. And basically that's something that we had taught the children ahead of time. Kaitel interacts very well with the children. He plays normally, he fights with the kids, shares snacks with the kids, um, shares toys. You know, he has complaints about other kids not sharing. Uh, if you were to really just sit down and watch Kaitel with the other children, you really wouldn't, you really couldn't tell whether he was, he had a hearing loss. And with the children interacting with Kaitel, it's basically the same. They're, they're comfortable with him. They can play with him. They complain that during video time, Kaitel's standing in their way. A lot of times the children forget that he has a hearing loss and they'll be yelling at him. So I would have to tell them, remind them and tell them that, you know, if they wanted to get his attention, they would have to tap him on the shoulder. I feel that the other children have really benefited from Kaitel. Them knowing that he has a hearing loss, it's kind of a learning experience for them. You know, they, they learn to respect and accept um, Kaitel for who he really is. As well as Kaitel benefiting from the children, uh, Kaitel First coming here, he was very shy. He he didn't really want to be here. You know, he had his crying moments, and he was mostly to himself. But um, he has really opened up with the children, and I think he's socially he's just great with the children. It just really opened him up. Honeybird Kids Center had been selected as a model daycare. We had gone through um, training to promote inclusive childcare. We didn't really have to prepare for Kaitel's arrival. We had already uh, been accepting children with disabilities. We've had a child that had Down syndrome, a child with autism. We've had numerous of children who were speech impaired. So there was really no preparation for Kaitel. It was just a matter of introducing Kaitel and to the children and introducing his disability and um, as a result of our training I basically feel that we're you know we'll, we're, we're basically prepared to take in any child including children with disabilities. Inclusive child care settings are the ideal environment for all kids as appropriately stated by Leona Mothness. Inclusive child care practice I feel is very important in any childcare setting. To me, it's not just about respecting, but it's also about accepting. It doesn't even have to be with the children with a disability, but also diversity, children with, that come from different cultures and backgrounds. It's, it's an experience for everyone, for any child. If you include them in an inclusive environment at a young age, then all the other kids are aware of it. They're not afraid. My advice, to the centers, to the home care centers, is don't be afraid. Um, allow them to just express themselves and be themselves. All they need is really support and their guidance. And just don't be afraid to bring them into your center. The Department of Public Health and Social Services, in collaboration with the University of Guam's Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities Education, Research and Services, also known as Guam CEDARS, provides training and technical assistance to centers and home-based child care settings through the Model Child Care Center program. For more information about this program, contact the Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Public Welfare.